Hey everyone, it's Rhonda here from Nelson Soapery. Today we're going to get into our Sunday chat as always, but this time it's a different topic because as you know, each Sunday it's a different topic we're going to talk about and today it's all about fragrances and how we calculate the fragrances. So this question was asked to me from Michelle. So for Michelle and everyone else listening, let's get into this topic. So um, besides me, I do have my questions, so I will look down every now and then and I apologize, but I can't remember everything offhand. So the main thing when you're doing any fragrances or anything like that, honestly, is research. I know you don't want to hear that, but it is research. I've done a lot of research um, over a number of years, but this last week, just so that we could talk about this, I did a lot more research again um, for you guys. So anyway, let's get into it and we'll talk exactly um, about all these things that you probably want to know. So what is fragrance oil? Well, this is what a fragrance oil would be, something like this. This one's from Pure Candle Supplies. And most of you probably know, regardless of what country you're in, there's lots and lots of different um, candle and soap suppliers of fragrance oils. And you'll see that there is mountains of them. I mean, thousands of them actually in all different scents and so on. So basically they're not natural. I mean, these are man-made. So this is really when science uh, meet sense, you know, so really the science is just meeting the scent that we want. It will have no natural benefits at all other than I do feel that regardless of whether something is um, man-made or whether it's naturally made, which is your essential oils, I really do feel that, you know, the scent um, that somebody brings into their home really can change their mood or make them happy um, and so on. But that's just, I think, really is more the memory thinking of certain scents. So when I think of musk, I think of, you know, when I was a little girl and my two older sisters would drag me to the milk bar and get me little musk sticks. So, um, you know, because my dad would give us extra money if I went along um, because I was the third daughter. So, you know, that way, that's what reminds me of that. So it's a good sweet memory so that's what I'm talking about when we talk about fragrance now let's talk about essential oils so essential oils are totally different they're absolutely concentrated uh, natural oils so basically what they do is they get you know it can be anything from the stem to the leaves to the buds um, and so on of a particular plant and then what they do is they gather all that together and then it is um, processed so um, when we say process it's you know like it's a particular way that they actually do this to create the little droplets of the oil from the plant so it's extremely um, concentrated and very strong so you cannot make anywhere near that so most um, when you're talk talking about essential oils they come in baby weenie bottles like this you can get bigger bottles but you know when you look at you getting something like this to this you can see the massive concentration that you would get in something like this and there are certain um, essential oils that really are no good for um, soaping and so on and some that are great things like cinnamon they're really no good on the skin they are way too strong and so on but I'll go through an essential oils list and I'll talk about the percentage rates that we should be using um, on the those as well and I'll also be referring um, just to different things that different information that I found as I've gone along and there's also um, fragrance association uh, websites that you can go on to and I will link them down below so it's called the IFRA um, and that's the International Fragrance Association so if you go on to that they'll talk all about you know fragrances and essential oils and so on and get some information on that any registered or professional soap business um, should be adhering to these um, laws and a little disclaimer and all this this is just the information I've done so please do go and do your own research don't take everything I say as total gospel because um, I definitely do not know everything about this I'm not a chemist or anything um, like I said this is simply from my own research so I'm just giving a bit of advice 
life so hopefully this helps you and it kind of leads you in the track of where to go but like I said I will actually pop their website down below and then um, in the description just have a look at that and go through it and do a little bit more of your own um, research on it but I found it to be a great website really easy to go through and find lots and lots of information so that is our first thing as well and now let's get into talking about um, the different essential oils that you can have. So we've already established here that, like I said, um, for your fragrances, um, and these are, you know, man-made fragrances, these ones um, check out their websites so for the suppliers so when i use um, for instance pure candle supplies they will have a different percentage to use if it's a wash off product if it's a candle so for instance a candle is like up to 10 percent i personally only use eight to nine percent usually nine percent is normal for me um, and then of course when you're using things like um, body washes or, you know your, your soap um, your whip soaps and so on so let me grab one of them So if we're using like things like this, like a whipped soap, then this um, percentage will be lower. So this would be 5%. Um, depending, some of them are lower, but generally this would be 5%. Your candle is 10%. And then for your essential oils, it can be anything as low as 0.1%, um, like very low. Um, and then it can go up to 3%. Generally, honestly, with essential oils, I stick to about 1%, which is lower than what you can um, put in. But, you know, you don't want um, an essential oil to give people rashes all over their face or legs or body. Um, so that's why I'm pretty careful um, when I do actually use essential oils. But anyway, and like I said, so uh, when you're going onto your suppliers' websites for fragrances, this is sort of what they talk about. And then, of course, there's different ones for diffusers and so on. So have a look at the bottom um, box that each particular supplier will have. So, for instance, if it is this particular one that says mustix, down the bottom it will actually list what you can actually use it for. If it doesn't list it, give them a call or shoot them an email and just ask. Um, you really do need to do your homework on that before you use a fragrance. And test it too. I test it all on myself. So, um, you know, if I get something and it's really burny or itchy on my skin, well, obviously I wouldn't sell that product. So, um, but that's just a little bit um, about how I do things with that anyway. All right, so let's talk about essential oils for a moment. So how do you know how to calculate them? So I'm gonna go through a little list here that I found of a few different essential oils and the percentages that um, the Fragrant Association suggests and other uh, websites suggest that you should be using. So if it's rose, it's 0.2%. Now that sounds really low, doesn't it? But it's because rose is so concentrated, so strong, you really do not need a lot. And geranium is very similar to that again. But then if you go to ones like chamomile, that's 3%. Eucalyptus, you can use 3%. Um, peppermint, 3%. Rosemary, 3%. Tea tree, ylang ylang. Um, lavender, also 3%. Patchouli, um, 1% to 2%. So, and then each of these um, particular um, essential oils, and obviously they have, you know, things that kind of represent them as well. So when you actually look them up, you know, it will say that, for instance, lavender is known as being relaxing. You know, patchouli is a relaxing one. Ylang Ylang is known to be essential, relaxing um, tension and relief um, oil. Um, lavender, you know, like I said, resting, peppermints, energizing. They've all got different benefits. But of course, I'm not a chemist and most of you probably are not. So we cannot say that any of the products that we're using these essential oils in do this. We cannot make any claims whatsoever on them. And I never, ever make a claim on them. I literally just put the essential oil, if I'm using it, um, just for the scent. So that's really what it is, just for the scent. So if people love lavender, you know, or they want a lavender essential oil, they know what they want. I don't need to explain that to them any further. So 
um, anyway but that's just a little bit of information like I said about your essential oils and then you've got to choose if that's right for you so usually they say on average it's 0.01 percent to 1 percent is the average on what you would put in soap products um, for essential oils myself I don't use a lot of them I use mostly fragrance oils because fragrance oils are designed and created for soap making candle making and so on so that way I know they are dedicated to what I'm doing and I just feel honestly that I'm not a chemist so I don't know enough about essential oils to use them in a lot of products but make that call yourself and like I said do do lots of research on it into calculating it um, as many of you know or if you don't know I'll tell you my husband is actually an engineer and a very clever brain um, so I always go to him for helping me calculate things so he's come up with a formulation which is nice and easy and I'll actually go through the formulation that he's created so let's get that ready and I'll get onto that and that will be the next bit we'll talk about now let's work out the calculations um, like I said we're going to be going off this soap whip so the reason that I'm going to go off this is it's a nice easy one because all of you should have the recipe because it's in my video before this one so go and check out that video if you haven't and it'll give you all the ingredients but for here so to work out our calculations there's a few things we need to know first so first we need to know the total ingredient volume that we're using for this so and then we also need to know the percentage of the fragrance so this percentage for instance or the one that i've used in this which was a rose um percentage and this was a fragrance oil not essential so i can use five percent load then um also we need to know what's your ingredients percentage well it's 95 percent because if your oil is five percent and the extra 95 percent equals 100 so it has to equal 100 obviously so if your load is three percent then your ingredients uh, load is going to be 97 so i hope that makes sense so it should always equal 100 so we've done that bit so now we'll leave that bit aside so now you know they're the three things you need to know before we can do the rest so to total this up, we're going to be totaling our ingredients. So our ingredients for this would be the whip base, the oil, the sugar that we're going to put in it and so on. If you have something like, you know, a tiny bit of kaolin clay, for instance, a tablespoon, you don't need to worry about that because, you know, you're going to put that in. It means we're going to add a bit less fragrance. It's still within the guidelines, which is fine. And then we're going to be dividing that by the percentage of 95 percent because we know that's what we need and then that's going to give me the total of two four one zero so i hope that makes sense to you but i will pop this calculation down the bottom for you as well in the description box so just check that out and um and then hopefully that makes more sense to you as well but i definitely will pop that in for you okay so now we've got our fragrance um amount equals the total times the load percent so it's literally going to be 2410 times 5 percent equals 120 grams so that's how we're going to be equaling that out and if you remember the 2410 that was our first how we ended up doing the first calculation to figure out the exact volume because we need to know the volume and the 95 percent of that volume because you know for instance if it's a thousand grams and you can use 10 percent well people might say okay it's a thousand ten percent of that's a hundred well if you put the hundred over it, it doesn't work out does it so the hundred needs to come under it so um if that i know it doesn't make sense sometimes because it's really hard to understand that but once you do the calculations and you play around with that honestly i promise you that you will you will get it because it took me a few hours to go okay now i get it um, and the same thing if you're going to be doing um, the same if you're going to do this for instance you want to add lavender essential oil you're going to still add up all your ingredients everything the same the only difference is your load percentage would be different it might be one percent um, rather than like I said with this one here um, you know that is five percent because we used a fragrance so that's how you tell the difference Now, I thought I would talk a little bit about um, essential oils because when I was looking this up, 
It was really confusing to me on why they were so different. But, you know, as I said earlier, the extracts are plants. So it is a natural product, isn't it? And it's really concentrated. So each of them, if you're going to choose one, don't just choose it and pop it in. You need to understand why you're actually choosing it. Are you choosing it for relaxation? Are you choosing it because of the smell? I mean, it could be lots of things you're choosing it for. But understand, you know, the reason behind them. And they say that there are 10 main ones that people use. So I'll go through that list so usually patchouli which that's known to be relaxing uh, lime uplifting and refreshing remember with lime though it is photosensitive any citrus one is which means you can go out to the sun even for a slight minute and it can totally burn your face and put big rashes everywhere so that is not for the face a citrus product um, then you've got peppermint and that's energizing and stimulating and getting back to the photosensitive products that so, you know lime mandarin orange all of those they're fine to have in you know like one of these because you're going to rub this on you and wash it off that's fine but not something that you know you're moisturizing like an oil or a body butter where you're going to rub it in your skin and leave it that i would not use it for that um, uh, so we'll get onto our list so tangerine and orange that's known to be cheering um, clears the mind and it's um, for balance you know these are things that chemists and people that are involved heavily into this have gone through this list um, and like I said I'm just giving you the information from researching it but I am no chemist I mean let's be honest I'm not um, lavender we all know that is great for relaxation restfulness um, it makes you sleepy they often put a little bit of I put a few drops of essential lavender in my baby soap and when I say a few drops I literally put three to four drops of lavender in a whole massive big um, bar that will have like 10 plus bars in it so um, that shows how strong it is you don't need much at all it's just a tiny tiny bit um, so don't use a lot of that don't just shake it in you really do need to um, measure this up properly so the same with fragrances don't just pop it in always you know measure it first which I always do in mine and some people you know might mix this with the oils before as well that's another way that you can do it and geranium is known to be calm and it's a mood improver but anyway there's lots of things on calculating isn't there and it can be really confusing so to just um, tap all of this up and you know figure all this out like I said first you need to know whether you're going to use your fragrance or essential oil secondly you need to know the load of that which the load will be different depending on each item and what each supplier suggests or if it's an essential um, oil but I don't buy essential oils or anything just from a normal shop always go to a soap or candle supplier and they will give you the information that you actually need um, it actually protects you too to be really honest with you and then from there you need to know what you're making whether it's a wash off product a stay on product and so on so anyway, I hope this has helped you a little bit. As I said, this little disclaimer, you know, uh, this is just from my own research, but do do a little bit extra research because it is a, a whirlwind of learning doing all these things. You know, it take me a long time to learn all this. Anyway, like I said, hopefully this has helped and this is our Sunday chat. So if it's been helpful, make sure you give me a thumbs up because that does, of course, help my channel. And once again, all of you guys know how much I love and appreciate you um, subscribing and always liking and commenting um, on my little baby channel that is slowly growing and growing. Each day it grows a bit more, which is really, really nice. So anyway, look after yourself, everyone, and stay indoors if you're in Australia because it's absolutely freezing. If you're on the other side of the world, I hope you are enjoying that gorgeous, beautiful sun that should be out. See you next time. Bye for now.